Those days we used to go for evangelism, preach to people, cast out devils, and then when we come back and we wake up after sleep, three, the three other preachers that, because four of us went, they said demons attacked them in the night. And I didn't know. I was sleeping. We wanted to find out, okay, what are you doing that we are not doing? We go for ministration, we come back, demons! One way was ah! from, from sleep. And the only thing I did that they were not doing was I had a father in the law that I go to report to. I said, Oga, we went here. We did this. We did that. I said, my son, you will not fall. You will not be conquered. And you will not die before your time. They didn't have anybody that does that to them. It was when we went to, and all of us are anointed. When we go to the field, we know they. they There is a secure, you see, you need security. As you, as you are seated here now, you need, you are in need of security. From a book I read, I learned that we shouldn't call anyone a master except the Lord Jesus and Father except God. How do we balance this with Paul calling Timothy a son? The summary answer is this. If in your house, everybody calls your father, 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 like some white people in some places, Father, you better call him Father. You better not come up with some strange, because that word you're saying, Father, is the same word, Papa, and that Papa is a worldwide word. The word in the Greek means Pata. In Matthew 20, it means source. So call no man your source. Don't look up and say, this man is the reason I am what I am. No, a human being, yes. Paul said to Philemon, he said, you owe me your very life. And it's true, some people owe people their life. People have laid down their life and wrought wonders for you. So in a sense, but on the other side, don't say anybody is the source of all you are. No, make sure you know God is your source, anointing, grace, and many other things. A human being can help you there and next, but that human being is getting from the source, which is God. That's what he meant. He didn't mean the word father or papa. Do you understand? Or pa. Don't change it and say, I'll call him pa. I'll call him daddy. So you, I'll not call him father. Don't deceive yourself. It doesn't, all that doesn't mean, to, always look at the reason. What was he aiming at? Many preachers do it today. They talk and act as though a human being is their source. The anointing that he gave me that, hmm, be careful. He may have taught you, he may have been laid hands on you and imparted a gift. But that gift, he got it from God and it passed through him to you. But he is not your source. The father is your source. Same thing for master or teacher. Rabboni. That word, that expression. The one who teaches you. He said the Holy Spirit. He said, I am your teacher. But when he was living, he said, I'll send the Holy Spirit. He will teach you. Another exactly like me, a loss exactly like me, will come. And he will teach you all things. He will take of mine and give you. All right? So, the place of teacher in our life now is the Holy Spirit. First John 2, 27. The same anointing abides in you. He teaches you all things. So, whether it's through a person like me or directly, it's that spirit that abides with you, that is making that knowledge and understanding available. It doesn't mean a human being can be your teacher because Paul clearly, different people say the right and they say, I am a preacher and a teacher of the Gentiles. He's not missing it. So he's a father. I'm a father in the Lord to people for real. I'm not contradicting God's word, but at all times I do one thing. I point them to the real father. That's how I am a good father. I'm a good teacher by pointing them to the real teacher. I teach people to study scripture, to know the Holy Spirit for themselves. So I teach them to learn or to meet the teacher. Okay? If Christ is his head and we say that we are under a person's covering, is it wrong? Is it wrong to be under a person's covering? Are you, can you be under a person's covering? Yes and no. Christ is our covering as the church but a human being can be given to you as a covering it was said to sarah that abraham human beings provide a covering in the sense of a form of protection you don't have to think for see i don't know the context in which the person that is asking that question is speaking because there may be a human being in his life where he has heard people say this man is his covering if not for this man he's exposed and it can be an absolute lie now, I don't know. Is there a teaching like that? I know I've heard of preachers say they are covering over churches. Is there something like that? I think so. Where preachers or an apostle, 
Uh -huh. They say they provide an apostolic covering over local assemblies. And sometimes they have a thousand churches they are covering. What a wingspan. Wow. I don't like that thing at all. I don't know why people... I don't know. People are sweet. I know that they, I have many spiritual children that will do great things, etc. I know they will come to me. I know I will constantly try to be a blessing to them. But I've been saying it for years, even when they were very small in God, that listen, when God gives you a commission and sends you out, it's you and God. I am not your boss. I may be a leader like Paul can write and say to the churches. But do you see Paul walking around and say, I'm your covering, I'm a covering. No, he communicates with the leaders and says, you people, you should do this. He gives them counsel, he gives them wisdom, fatherly direction. But he says, I don't have dominion over your faith. So when people say they are covering to someone as though they are God and they want to gather God's people under their wings. That's the job of Jesus. That's the job of God. Even me, even with this small congregation I have that I'm directly pastoring, I don't even operate like that. I tell people, pray about it. I still, I still let you know that you, there's you, there's God. Then there's me, big brother, trying to help you because I've known him for a while. Then I say, come, let me talk to him. Even though I've laid hands, done many things, healed, done many things. Even though I'm the direct source, God has used to do so many things. I still always stand by your side. I find it fascinating that someone having quote an apostolic ministry. They never knew you till you started the church, grew it up, had 300 people. Then your pastor carries all of you like this, goes and places under the apostolic covering of a certain man. I think it's a false doctrine. It's very popular. It's been around for a long time. They are not even involved in your beginnings. They know nothing. They didn't lead you to Christ. They didn't circumcise you. They didn't help you grow. They just brought a revelation. About, it was very popular in America years ago. I think it's very erroneous. I think it creates room for the devil. I think there's something about being part of a group of people that gives strength because two are better than one, yes? But I think it is extremely dangerous to go around looking for people to drag under and say, come under my apostolic covering. All those people will be sending type to them. I wouldn't like to ever do such a thing. I'm not saying a church can't send support, but are you sure that's where you should be sending it? You existed. You were laboring for 10 years. Then he showed up and taught you. This is how he spread in America and around the world. It came and he said, well, I don't know if you know about apostolic coverings. I invited you 500 ministers of the gospel here to let you know that everyone, every church was beyond that apostolic covering. And they swallowed it. Is it not bells? This is what bells do. So picture someone coming to me now and say, you should come under my apostolic covering. I will ask you questions first though, just for discussion's sake. And I will quote scripture at you too. And if you cannot answer it, bye bye sir. And stop it, we enter problems. We have all sorts of bad habits, but it's what happens when you're ignorant and blind. What is that? Why do you want? Why should you even want to go around being a ruler? Is this the age to come? Again, I think people make mistakes. I think it exposes that servant of God to great danger. Yes. Okay, you're the one standing between each of them. A person is a covering. Parents are a covering. Pastors are coverings. Leaders are coverings. Coverings, not in the sense of the Lord being a covering, a shield. Leaders are shields. That's how the Bible says it. Some places say leaders, some say shield. Leaders can be a shield. I've often demonstrated how the shield of faith can be so big that you cover the whole church, you can help it. But it's not you, it's the shield of faith you have. It's the faith in God you have that you have extended. Do you understand? So God is the covering. The armor of God is the covering. The fortress, the stronghold you build with your effort, your love, provides a covering. I've seen people, they are part of the church, then they step out and they get harmed very fast, sometimes physically, because they pulled away. It's not per se the pastor. It's that they, the, just understand this. Someone built a bunker and said, when you hear shooting, run into it. And you said, and you came out when they were shooting. And you said, no, God, God is my covering. Is it possible a bullet might hit you? Because you are disobedient and foolish. What was the bunker for? Go in. So God gives you the body of Christ, the church, a local church. There's the World Church International. You run in there. There's a covering. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. The name of the Lord. So when you go to a place where he places his name, like a church like this, he places his name there. There's a covering that comes, but it's the, from the Lord. The name of the Lord that is exalted there. Do you understand? And that person that helps the name of the Lord to be exalted is likely the leader, right? 
and he's creating an atmosphere for your safety now when you remove yourself from out of that you may be exposed to danger i agree but for someone that is already covered then someone else came and said you know these you people's coming i'm the original cover seller that's the one i'm objecting to like what is that who are you sir you want to build something go and take a loan from a bank and pay slowly what are you doing going around collecting endless numbers of churches under yourself what is that oh i'm an apostle and i wonder show me the scripture for the concept i've seen a few and it doesn't make sense i debunk all why would you a human being paul said clearly that he doesn't go where other men have who knows scripture have labored did you labor here someone else labored built everything you showed up and collected the labor what kind of business is that that's one of the problems of denominationalism what's that what, why are you doing that he labored you showed up and took the spoils it's the husband man that labors that is the first partaker of the fruits oh it's first we we are second go away don't be second third or fifth i can come to your church or your ministry and share in what you have because two are better than one do you get i can be a blessing to support the great work you're doing but to say i'm coming under your covering my covering is the lord jesus christ the angel in the church in smyrna to the angel in the church in ephesus to the angel in did he send it to one person next thing someone will say john was the covering to the seven churches no it was a messenger but they sent it to multiple so god speaks to individual churches god speaks to individual people one person shouldn't go out and try to be covered i gave myself as an example all the people have sat under me the flock of god under my care 300 whatever number they are i don't that's why it's good to grow up first before you handle responsibility i even those who live with me in my house don't dominate your faith ever i'm constantly suggesting because i'm not the holy spirit i'm constantly saying have you prayed about it i think you should pray about it let's pray about it first it may take months before i say anything there's no desperation in me to become your god never because i understand how these things work it's pride I'm sorry, a lot of it is just pride. People are just, they haven't learned to humble themselves. And I repeat, many, especially Africazo, Nigeria, many is for the tight. So any, any Jack Rag and Tom Straw will show up and say, Uma of God, I come to submit myself as a son in ministry. Do you know if you come to me like that, I tell you, stand up, sit down, wait first. You don't adopt fathers, fathers adopt sons. People don't understand these things. The Bible says Paul, why could he call Timothy his son? The Bible says he found him. He already knew God. His grandmother and mother taught him about God. He knew the Holy Scripture since he was a child. The Bible says he took him and circumcised him. Your father is the person that circumcises you. Not the person that led you to the Lord. That's my spiritual father. Again, find the messages I preach on this. Listen to it. Not because he gave birth to you. That doesn't make him your father. Who said he even gave birth to you? Then it means the person that led you to Christ and backslid 10 years ago. That means he's your spiritual father. Meanwhile, he's backslidden. No, that's not a father. A father is the one who circumcises Abraham. Okay? Joshua became a father to the nation when he took them, circumcised them. The person that causes you the most pain in your most sensitive areas, that goes after, whom God gives an assignment and he goes after. He may have been born again for 20 years. I understand a pastor saying someone is his father. If that pastor has been like a quack, semi-quack, semi-pastor, semi-something, minister, just one funny shifting. Then he came across a servant of God who took him and turned him inside out, ripped his flesh nature off him, circumcised his heart with a sharp knife, gave him the word of God unmercifully, just put it there and tore and said, you see this thing you're doing? Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. This is not, what are you doing? You mislead your people like this? And he, oh God, he's raw and bleeding. If you're not in pain under the person that fathers you, he's not a father. If he has not caused you, if you have not cried, whether you heard it from a general meeting or up personal, it's the same. If he has made you no pain in this life, you left to obey him, you had pain. That's circumcision. And then it makes you a new person. You come out with a new ability to procreate in the spirit. That is fathering. You don't come and claim it. You don't say, Father, I'm not your father. I looked at you. Your face doesn't look like me at all. Look at all these funny things I hear you do. Me. Father. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody I'm your father. Oh. Erase, bring your exercise book. Erase that name. But if I'm your father, then you honor me. And I will treat you like a son too. You serve me. John 12. You serve like a son serves his father. Some of my favorite stories that you share are those of your own father, your earthly yeah. father. Yep, yep. 
And um, I think it is significant to address the fact that we do have real needs from earthly yeah. spiritual parents or physical parents. Yeah. How would you say we balance that with um, the need to get actually our identity and, and really important needs met by the Heavenly Father? Well, um, let me use the example of a, of a baby sheep, a lamb. A lamb doesn't know the voice of the shepherd. A lamb knows the voice of the you sheep, the, la- the, the mother sheep. And it's in following the mother, it learns to recognize the voice of the shepherd. And so it's that way with earthly fathers and the spiritual fathers. You connect with the ones God's put over you. You, you learn to relate to them. You draw from them. You, you come alive from what they say about your life. And in that journey with them, you learn to recognize more and more the voice of the Father. Of course, it's not either, either or. We are uh, humanly connected in community as we're supposed to be. But we also have to have our own relationship with God. And, um, and so it's, it's, it comes down to this. There are times where the Lord will not satisfy you with what you can get from the people around you. And you, you have to go to God to get it. And there are other times he will seal up the answer in the mouth of a friend, or in this case, a spiritual father. And you can pray night and day, fast, do everything you want, but until you seek the counsel from that father, and it's, uh, it, you, you learn in the doing. It's not, a, it's not a formula, you know, we can write out, you know, two days of this, three days of that. It's, uh, it's a journey where we're on this quest to know God, and we will respond to whatever tool he uses. If it's uh, another man or a mother, a woman in our life speaking to us, great. If it's our prayer life, great. It's just that we are responding to the cry to grow and to know him more. So it's, it's both. It's sure. both hands. Yeah. Sure. You see, the word father in the Hebrew is the word fundus. And it means foundation. And in the Greek is the word pata. And it means nourisher and sustainer. This pedestals the office of fatherhood above every other office in the body of Christ. So the apostle needs a father. The prophet needs a father. The pastor needs a father. The evangelist needs a father. And the teacher needs a father. This is the journey that fathers travel through to come to that hallowed place to occupy that office of fatherhood. So fathers like patriarchs are custodians in the kingdom. And one of the things they do is that they constore spiritual dimensions. So Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart unto you. I know you have the Holy Ghost, but there is something I carry on account of my work with God that is a testimony in heaven. And I come to impart unto you spiritual gifts not that you may manifest because the gifts of the spirit are manifested for profit he said but that in the end this one i'm imparting is that you may be established there are giftings that brings about manifestation for helping humankind and there are other giftings that brings about stability in your work with god if a man finishes strong 90 percent of the time is because he has a father and in hebrews the Bible makes us understand that we should be yielded and submitted to them that have rule over us because they will give account. And that account, the Bible said, it's for our profiting. So there is something that gives us profiting at the end when the day of reckoning comes. It is called the mystery of fatherhood. And this is why the patriarchs of old, when their journey on earth is over, they gather their sons around them and they constore dimensions on their lives. And when they are done, the Bible would usually say, they gather themselves and they rested with their fathers because there's a track record of heritages. There's a track record of dealings. And these things cannot be caught in the Bible study. They are only transmitted from people that sustain such testimonies with God. Our generation is not a generation in need of revelation. Our generation is not a generation in need of anointing. Our generation is a generation desperately in need of accurate men that have stature in the heavens. And this is why fatherhood has become a commodity 
that we must search, seek, and desire. And if need be, beg for. Because it's beyond direction. It is what makes us finish strong. We refer to pastors as a father. And there are some people that are very allergic to that. I hope you know that. There are some people to call their pastor a father is like taking 10 pints of blood from their body. They can't stand calling a pastor father because they never had a good relationship with their natural fathers. Anybody that is allergic to calling a pastor my spiritual father has a problem with natural fatherhood. But spiritual fatherhood is different from natural fatherhood. A natural father is a natural relationship and can never help you fulfill the plan of God for your life. Never. A natural father can send you to school. A natural father can pay your school fees. A natural father can buy you a house. A natural father can give you a car. A natural father can give you money. All that has no eternal value. So it cannot help you fulfill the plan of God for your life. It is a spiritual father that will build doctrine into you and build ministry out of you. He will build doctrine into you and bring service out of you. And it is in that service that you fulfill the plan of God for your life. Am I communicating at all? Yeah? And people don't. They say, well, the Bible says, call no man father upon the earth. The same Jesus who said, call no man father upon the earth, called Joseph his father. Brother Paul could boldly say, Timothy, you are my son. I have begotten you by the gospel. A spiritual father, the word father means source. Source, pata. A spiritual father is a, your spiritual source where you're drinking doctrine from, where you're learning Christ from, the person that is shaping your life. It is not a title. It's a responsibility. 